He was a tax collector. And I don't, I don't think he was all that, um, that fair and square with people either. But when Jesus came, he made him, he made him that way. Well, that's what it is. He made them that way. You know, when they came, when they, they immediately accepted, as soon as he asked, they immediately accepted. It was something about Jesus. He had to anoint it. And they just, they just came to him, you know, as is. And then Jesus teach them the way, and then they break off. I'm reading the word every day, all the time. Well, I, I love the word. I love to get more and more of the word in me, and then become the, might as well say a Bible scholar. That's what we need. That's what I need. As in, as in for my calling, I need to know the whole body, the whole word, you know? And so, I, I, I mean, like I say, I'm not perfect, but you see what, I, what my fruits are, what I'm doing. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm just a person who needs more prayers. I need more prayers. I need the Lord to work in my life. And if you know what I mean, and get me where I need to get. You know? And I'm and I'm praying that he does the same for you guys. What whatever your weakness is, I pray in Jesus' name that he help us all. He heal us all of our afflictions, our sin, forgive us of our sins. See mercy on the people. Mercy, Lord Jesus, mercy. Help us, clean us, cleanse us, Lord Jesus. So I don't want to talk about hypocrisy. I mean, we have uh, numerous ones where Jesus talks about hypocrisy and uh, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. Uh, let me see which one. And the thing is, you know, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you what the word says. If, the word, if anybody gets convicted of anything that comes out of my mouth when I'm, I'm reading the Bible, I'm coming, everything, every word I'm coming from that I'm, that I'm saying is from the Bible. What I'm saying is the words are all up in here. They're, that's what, that's what the proof is. And, uh, let me see here. What do we got? Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And now about prayer. See, huh. and now about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray, pub pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I assure you that all that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourselves, shut the door behind you, and pray to your father secretly. Then your father, who knows all secrets, will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered only by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, but because your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Give us our food today and forgive us our sins, just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And don't le let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast... Don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, who try to look pale and disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. I assure you, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will suspect you are fasting, except your father, who knows what you do in secret. And your father, who knows all secrets, will reward you. Okay. This is God right here telling you, this is Jesus talking in Matthew chapter 6, that you need to believe in him, trust in him, and he'll, and also forgive. If you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive others. You have to forgive others. You cannot, you can't, you can't hold grudges. And then, uh, if you forgive, and then you'll get your, you'll, oh yeah, and also, see, if some people, like when some people fast or whatever, or whatever they do religiously and, uh, you know, trying to act like they're about God, for God or if they are 
you know, whatever. Whenever there's a person that's fasting, there's two types of people. There's one that's fasting for God, and there's one that's fasting for the people, just to get, uh, commend, you know, commended by the people. And that's the, that's, the, that's the split decision that only God knows. Only God knows. But uh, also, those people's fruits will eventually show who they really are. You know, people won't be deceived for too long about that. Uh, we also have Romans. Now, this guy, now see, the thing is, the question would be, is do I have to stop, would I have to stop preaching until I, until I got completely perfect, which I'll never get, but um, am I still allowed to preach? That's the question I have. Because what if a person, you know, uh, they, I mean, like everybody, I say, he says everybody has sin, but from the curse, you know, we're all are cursed and we have uh, the flesh. You know, even when we get the Holy Spirit, we have the flesh that's a battle. And I'm about to read some, uh, some, some Paul and uh, some Paul, Romans 7. And y'all tell me what y'all think. No longer bound to the law. Now, dear brothers and sisters, you who are familiar with the law, don't you know that the law applies only to a person who is still living? Let me illustrate. When a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he lives, is alive. But if he dies, the law of marriage no longer applies to her. So while her husband is alive, she would be committing adultery if she married another man. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law that and does not commit adultery when she remarries. So this is the point. The law has no, lo no longer holds you in its power because you died to its power when you died with Christ on the cross. And now you are in united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, you can produce good fruit that is good deeds for God. When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us, and the law aroused these evil desires that produced sinful deeds resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law, for we died with Christ, and we no longer where we are no longer captives to its power. Now we can really serve God, not in the old way by obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way by the Spirit. God's law reveals our sin. Well then, I am suggesting that the law of God is evil. Of course not. The law is not sinful. But it was the law that showed me my sin. I would never have known that coveting is wrong if the, law, if the law had not said, do not covet. But sin, but sin took advantage of this law and aroused all kinds of forbidden desires within me. If there were no law, sin would not have that power. I felt fine when I did not understand what the law demanded. But when I learned the truth, I realized I had broken the law and was a sinner doomed to die. So the good law, which was supposed to show me the way of life, instead gave me the death penalty. Sin took advantage of the law and fooled me. It took the good law and used it to make me guilty of death. But still, the law itself is holy and right and good. But how can that be? Did the law, which is good, cause my doom? Of course not. Sin used what was good to bring about my con condemnation. So we can see how terrible sin really is. It uses God's good commandment for its own evil purposes. Struggling with sin. The law is good, then. The trouble is not with the law, but with me. Because I am sold into slavery with sin as my master. I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. I know perfectly well what I am doing is wrong, and my bad conscience shows that I agree 
that the law is good 